All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Skills Development Training, uh, number, I think we're at eight. Uh, today's workshop is going to be all about resume building, as this was heavily requested by a lot of the ambassadors. Since we didn't have too many people who could attend the call today, since we postponed it from yesterday, we're going to do this completely over YouTube. So there are key specific things that we want to discuss about nine specific points that we want to make about resume building and you know, as you guys are now looking to graduate from college and get onto your first jobs, some of you finish your internships, it's very important that you start building a profile for yourself that other people can look at very quickly and understand a little bit about who you are, what you want to do, and uh, you know what you're all about. Uh, now, your resume is not as it used to be 10 years ago. 10 years ago, your resume was one of your only pieces of information that you could hand somebody where they could gauge your, uh, you know, about you and, and what you're all about. Um, but today we've got things like LinkedIn, we've got online branding portfolios, we've got medium.com for article publishing. So there's a much larger uh, uh, scope of tools that you can use to showcase what you do, what you're all about. Uh, so let's go through it. So firstly, the first one you want to make is that your resume is your foot into the door. Uh, it's not your entire life story. Uh, this is very important. Your resume is how you're going to get to the next stage of the interview process. And it's a quick way for somebody to understand exactly what your experiences have been and what you're looking to do in the future. So we don't need to know every little detail, every little point, every little accomplishment that you uh, did across your entire life. That's what will be questioned during the interview stages or if people want to know, they may even ask you to fill out an online questionnaire before the job application, uh, which is what we do at 1UP. We gather a lot of information apart from your resume. Your resume is just one aspect of it. So using your resume, we get a lot of information about, um, you know, how's the design of the resume? Like, how is the English that's been used? You know, what is the type of accomplishments that you want to show off? Like, not everybody has massive, you know, accomplishments when they're 20, uh, 21. But um, a lot of people do have done a lot of things that could translate into what could be looked at as a real life skill. So if you're very athletic, whether you've taken part in clubs and organizations, we want to see what you are showing off to the world uh, about yourself. So it's a very quick one pager. While you're in college, it should be one page. Keep it very, very simple. Um, and then eventually after you graduate, I'm going to show you a couple of resumes, right? And after you graduate, you may have a little more breadth of scope. So you may have larger resumes uh, that show off a lot more of your experience. And uh, your resume is going to just fit into one part of your entire profile. So your resume may link then to other online resources where people can learn more about you. So please remember your resume is your foot into the door. It's your first impression. Um, and today one can argue LinkedIn is probably more of your first impression, but your resume still continues to be very important. And it's your first step through the door and it's something that gauges your interest uh, into the job and what your capabilities are very quickly. Okay. Um, your resume, like we mentioned, the second point is that your resume is just one part of your profile, right? The other parts of your profile could be your LinkedIn, could be your GitHub, could be Medium article. So let me take you through a few examples. And the best way for me to do this is through my own examples. So if you ask me for my resume today, what that would be is um, what I would do. Just one second. Um, I'm in the middle of something, please. Sorry, guys. Somebody's trying to talk to me. So, just okay. So, uh, one second. Sorry, I got distracted. So, right now, what this is over here is my resume. If you ask it for me today, and this is you know after graduation, after having a few corporate jobs, after working in a lot of different industries, and now running a startup. So. There's a lot more breadth of information here, and I'm not really limited to one page. I still have a one-page resume, but I've not really had to send out a resume for the last few years. Uh, but whenever I'm meeting with potential clients or with investors or anything, it, it's a very quick way for them to understand what I'm all about. Um, so over here, you know, we go through, and this is a resume of somebody who's graduated, had jobs, and, and is trying to do their own startup right now. Um, a lot of volunteer experience, what my interests are, what my education is. Very, very clean, simple design. Um, that's one part of it, right? Now, the second part could be something like my portfolio, which I keep updated online. So my second part is uh, what I've got as my uh, website, which is teachundo.com, where here I'm kind of, you know, more breadth of experience, where there's a lot of stuff I've obviously done in college and after college, just like a lot of you. And you want to, you know, have all of your social handles there, what you're all about, what research you've done, what coursework you've done in college. Some things could be very interesting for your coursework. Uh, that you did like a dissertation. So I wrote, I end up writing a lot of economic papers. 
So I like to, you know, write those, put those econ papers out there. Most of this is really for my own memory and for my own understanding and really to look back and, you know, just enjoy this work that I did uh, in college because you guys end up doing a lot of projects and, you know, a few years after college, you're just going to forget about everything. Another interesting part about putting your stuff out there is that people can use the work that you've done in their further research, uh, which has happened to me a few times, actually. So this is a lot of stuff that I worked in in college, everything from history to materials engineering, to aerospace engineering, um, you know, economics. So what my homepage looks like is kind of just a collection of, you know, who I am, what I've done, uh, what I'm doing right now, some of my tweets, uh, some of what I've written about, you know, and then, uh, just a, a small blog of like all my gigs that I'm working on. So guest speaking roles or articles that I've written just so people can keep updated w with what I'm doing. Um, again, now research, these tabs are going to be very specific to who you are as a person, but you can imagine as a designer, you'd have your portfolio up here. As a computer scientist, you'd have the, you know, your GitHub profile linked over here. Uh, as somebody in economics and finance, you could have your papers or your work that you've done or extracurriculars you've done on the side. So my, for my professional work experience, I just linked to LinkedIn because that's the easiest way to do it. Um, for your extracurriculars, this is really where, you know, if you're doing things like sports on the side and activities or, um, you know, model UN, investment clubs, whatever, just you can kind of highlight everything here. Once you do it, it, it lives online. And this is completely free to do. The only thing that I paid for, I believe, is teachando.com, which is very low cost since not many people have my name. Um, but you can also take a free URL and then do a bit.ly link behind it. Very ways to get free URLs. I'm using Weebly right now completely for free. So this is very low cost to do. Um, it's very easy to set up. You don't need a computer science degree. So um, what else? So then I have a small little page showing currently what I'm up to, right? And this is just very casual, personal, where I'm hiking, where I'm diving, you know, what I want to do in my personal life, where I'm writing, or, you know, what I'm working on. So this is a very in-depth look, you know, from my resume, you look at that, you're like, okay, what's this guy all about? I click on the website and, you know, I can see what's up on the website. I keep my Twitter fairly up to date. I keep my Instagram fairly up to date. Um, you know, and my Medium profile, I haven't written too much, but when I am writing, it is up to date. So that's another aspect of your profile. Now, as a developer or as a designer, uh, you know, you may have a, a GitHub portfolio that you want to link to, uh, or you may have a uh, Behance portfolio that you want to you want to link to. So it's very important to keep all of these, um, you know, all of these websites updated with your information. Put your stuff out there. It's easy to do. Now, why all this is important is because you're trying to build credibility. It's very important for you to build credibility that people understand that, you know, like you're a thought leader or you're somebody who actually cares about the industry. You're not just coming into this, you know, to, to make money because that's the biggest turn off is somebody coming for a job just to make cash and they don't care really about it. Um, the workforce that we have today is passion driven. People are very passionate about what they do or they, or they say they are or they want to be passionate. And there comes a point where you do things for the cash, uh, but you're also doing things to build your career. And the money is one part of it. But if you're not really into the job that you're trying to sign up for, uh, right, people are going to see through that. And the best way for you to differentiate yourself from the crowd is to have these portfolios online, is to, you know, keep your stack overflow. Uh, if you're a developer, keep your stack overflow uh, updated, answer questions, get on Quora, you know, answer stuff about your industry and build credibility online. And then lastly, I'd, I'd say you should obviously LinkedIn. Uh, and LinkedIn, you know, some people are very good at it. Some people are not so good at it, but at the very, very basic, have a profile picture, have a nice heading, tell people what you're currently up to, you know, uh, rising graduate at Mount Carmel's graduating 2020 March, right? That goes a long way. Tell people what you're all about. Um, you know, small little about section, don't have to write, uh, you know, in third person and all that as a college student. Just keep it very simple. Tell people what you're doing right now, what you've done in the past, um, you know, what your education is, what your background is, what you're currently working. Very important. List the classes and the organization that you're currently in, right? Um, that's very, very important for the college that you're at. You're not, you're not just a college student. You're doing your culture fest. You're part of the talent team. You're part of the sports team. You're doing a lot of different stuff. And then your volunteer experience, if you aren't volunteering, you know, if you're in, do something that you're passionate about, don't just volunteer just to put on your resume. People see through that stuff, right? I enjoy uh, talking to design communities or development communities recently uh, or giving a you know, small workshop on financing based on stuff that I've done in the past. And that's the kind of thing that if somebody reaches out to me to do, I do it pro bono. Um, and I enjoy doing that and I get to list that in my resume so people can kind of see what I'm all about. 
uh, your skills and endorsements, all of these are very LinkedIn specific and you know, you can go as deep as you want into this, but essentially what it means is that your resume is not the only part of your profile. It's not going to save you. It's not going to get you a job. It's going to get you through the door and then everything else that you build is going to add credibility. But at the end of the day, all of this puts you in front of the interviewer. So we could do an entire different session, which is all about how to nail, you know, your job interview. Uh, but for now, we're just focusing on the things that you submit to a company when you're applying for a job. So now let's go back and look at um, what to actually put in resume. I'm not going to show you this resume because this is obviously not the position that you guys are in. I'm actually going to pull up a resume just to let you guys know this is, you know, I have a resume archive uh, and you can see from 2010, right? Every year from 20, I started college in 2009. So literally from my first semester of college, I had my resume updated constantly updating in my college, had a fantastic career building workshop that you could attend once a semester. People were helping you out. So 2011, 2012, it's like constantly, constantly being updated. So let's look at my graduating port, my graduating resume, right? Like when I, when I was about to graduate college and what, what that kind of looked like. Um, let's see, let's take a look at resume to go. All right. So now back in the day, 2014, resumes were a little different than what they are today because back then it was all about your life and all about your profile on one page. When I look back at this, it's so cringeworthy. There is so much text. Lately in the last three years, I've, I've gone into design and product design. And I look at this and it hurts my brain. There is so much information on this page that I was trying to prove, you know, like look at all the stuff that I've done. Uh, if I had to go back and tell myself in 2014, it would be like, hey, buddy, listen, relax, put some spacing in there, put only the most important stuff. Uh, I was in this position where, you know, it was like I had done finance and economics and aerospace and different, different things. And I wanted to, you know, show that I've done these different things. But what I realized quickly after talking to a lot of uh, seniors was that, you know, focus on what the recruiter is looking for. Now, don't just tell them everything. Tell them exactly what they're looking for specifically. And that's really what helped me trim down my resume and like, put stuff in there that uh, really did matter rather than everything. So what I ended up doing was I created multiple resumes depending on what type of job I was going for. So I had an economics uh, resume, I had an aerospace resume, I had a strategy consulting resume. And each of these, these resumes, as, as you'll see, they have specific flavors to them about what they're all about, right? Be based on the person who's reading it. So if I look at a strategy consulting resume and I got a couple of offers in this in this field as well, I didn't end up taking it. I ended up joining a, a consumer products company. But over here, you can see like I'm specifically going towards uh, an industry. And what I'm coming down to is that when you come to like what you should include in your resume, depending on, you know, what specific resume you're building, the only question you have to ask yourself is so what? Right. Like, so what if I every line that's in there? So let's take an example. Let's pull up my general resume. Right. Uh, and in this resume, let's ask ourselves, OK, like, so what for every single uh, line item here? OK, not a very good GPA. And I think that wasn't something that I prided myself on, but I put it out there. Right. OK, a low GPA, but I put my stuff that I'm working on. So I'm doing a finance certificate, I'm doing economics minor and I'm doing my aerospace uh, degree. Uh, putting on there that I had a much higher GPA when I was studying abroad at, at Oxford uh, for a summer program. Now, here I'm coming in and putting my work experience. OK, so I'm putting in different countries that I've worked in, China, United Kingdom, India. And for each specific um, list, I'm going to ask myself, so what? OK, I designed a tool using Excel VBA to track the performance of multiple accounts. So what? The so what here is that, OK, I know Excel VBA, Visual Basic Applications, and that's a good skill to have. Uh, promoted to head intern. So what? Showing leadership skills. OK, produced CNC machine components for the Airbus A320. So what? That means that I actually was on the factory floor. I didn't just sit in an office. I actually got my hands down and dirty and produced components for the Airbus A320. Uh, generate tooling requirements and procedural guidelines for various machine com components. So what? Okay, I'm doing guidelines. When you're doing SOPs and guidelines, you're, you're in a position where you have to understand the whole system and then only you can write the guidelines. So for each and every single line in your resume, you need to ask yourself, so what? Right? Like, what's the purpose of having this there? Another thing you'll realize is that every single line item starts with an action word, a doing word. We don't want to just write uh, a made three demo portfolios or uh, used Excel VBA, right? We don't want to do things that are just passive. We want to do things that are active, promoted to head intern, um, designed a tool, 
produced something, generated something, collected something, developed something, designed something. So these are things that show that you did stuff in your internships, you did stuff at, at college, not just, you know, part of a team that did something. Like we want to know exactly what you did, what was your contribution, how did that help the project or how did that help the team? Same thing in leadership, right? Served. And now here, editor-in-chief of the monthly newsletter. Now that's, I would argue, is not a doing word, but why that's in there is to show that, okay, there was a promotion involved. Uh, previously served as sector analyst, so showing some sort of history. Uh, headed, successfully prepared, served, succeeded, right? Uh, so these are the things that we want to put in doing words. So every time you look at your um, resume, you're looking at doing words, I'm going to share with you an Excel sheet of doing words. That way you can get a, a bunch of doing words and you can replace your current uh, sentence that you have with these doing words. Okay, let's move on. So your resume needs to be specific and to the point. I have a lot of stuff on here because of the amount of jobs or roles that I held. But for every single role, you'll notice two to three bullet points. That's it. Two to three bullet points maximum. I would argue for me to go back and mentor myself for this resume, I'd say cut out some points. I'm reading stuff here now on the other side of the, you know, of the hiring uh, pipeline. And I can easily cut off a lot of the stuff over here and make this resume a lot more breathable, a lot more design friendly. Right. So specific to the point, two to three bullet points is more than enough. For now, like I said, stick to a one page resume um, and make sure that you have your skills listed down there. So I, I didn't fluent in Hindi and English and my technical side, I put in technical things that I knew. Uh, just to make sure that, you know, whoever's reading my resume understands that what I'm all about, but very, very simple. Um, and, you know, guys, you're going to have to experiment with tons of resumes. Like you can see over here, like I had so many different types of resumes, uh, right? This is my economics resume, which was very focused on economics and how I use my economics uh, minor to like get stuff done in mostly uh, college campus organizations and in one of my past internships. But if you look at my archive, Right. You'll see tons of different, you know, within the same month, my resume changed, you know, one, two, three, four times. Uh, so what that means is that I'm experimenting around. This one has way too much text, so I probably cut down on it. Uh, stick to a nice font size, like a 10 would be the minimum, 12 would be ideal. Um, now, how I built a resume like this is a product called Novo Resume, N-O-V-O resume.com. Um, I use the free service. There's also a paid service. You can use the paid service if you'd like. It's a one-time investment and get a nice service, get a nice resume out of it. But you're always going to have to update your resume for every job that you apply to. So you may want to get the package. You may not want to get the package, but give it a shot. Now, uh, the next thing that we want to highlight is that you went, okay, what do I put in my resume? What you really want to show is you want to show that you have the ability to learn, adapt, grow, and add you have to add value to every job that you do. Like it doesn't, okay, you learn so much from the job. Great. Nobody cares. Learning is not the point of life. Learning is a pathway to doing things with your knowledge. It doesn't help that if you have so much knowledge, you can't do anything with it, right? Uh, so you want to show that you learned. You came in with certain amount of knowledge or you may not have any knowledge at all. So, you know, okay, degree in mechanical engineering. Great. So you have some technical skill, but then you learned, say, uh, you say you learned, some sort of like CAD software, right, on the job. And then you produced CAD drawings that went on to do X, Y, Z, right? Like that shows that you got your degree, you learned something, and then you did something with it, which then helped the company or the organization or the job that you were in, in a specific way. That's the kind of loop that you want to show for every single job that you've had. And if you had a job where you didn't really add value, I would argue that take it out. We don't want to see people who are just bouncing from job to job just to put on their resume. And it's so easy to sniff that out because you're hiring managers who are looking at your resumes. You have to understand they went through the same process as you. They know all of your tics, uh, tricks and tricks of the trade. So uh, keep that in mind. One of the most important things is you, you really have to have a different um, resume for every job that you apply to. One is like every industry, but also every job. If you're going to apply for a job, we live in a world where you can just really, literally hit like apply, 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 apply. Trust me, everybody knows that you're doing that because it's so obvious. If somebody is like on angel list, for example, uh, every job applicant has to write a small intro note. People copy paste intro notes all the time. Like if you're not going to take the time to apply with diligence to every job, you're going to hurt your chances. And there are people out there like we interview hundreds of developers month on month for jobs that we're recruiting for right now. And we can easily eliminate people based on 
ways that they have applied or approached for the position, right? So as a hiring manager, you're not, you're looking for easy ways to say no to people. So don't give people reasons to say no. Because if you're going to copy paste something, I had somebody who was like, oh, we saw your job on Craigslist and we, I want to apply, you know, I'm like, we've not even posted our job on Craigslist, right? So like, I'm not going to even take that person to the next step because like, not only has he not done his diligence, he's not even proofread, he's not even double checked, he's not even looked at what job he's applying for. We have people call us the wrong company and, or the wrong position, applying for an Android position with the backend developer. Right, so these are these little pieces of sloppiness show that you're not really serious about the job hunt. You're just applying, applying, applying as much as you can, and you are hurting your own chances. Quality more than quantity. It takes a lot of work to get a good job that you want. It's not easy. It's a full-time role, and as you can see, like when I was applying, I probably applied to 120 jobs. Right, like diligently, I had cover letters for every single job. Wrote to the hiring manager, added them on LinkedIn, spoke to them, had an, spoke to other people in the company. Like got a recommendation from within the company. That's the kind of stuff you need to do if you want to get that dream job of yours. It's not going to come into your lap. There are thousands of students out there who are exactly like you, who are working a lot harder, and they're the ones who are going to get those jobs. Now, coming to cover letters, which I briefly mentioned. Cover letters, let me pull up uh, one of them. So your cover letter is kind of like, a cover letter doesn't have to be like a PDF. It can be. A cover letter can be an email. Hey, I applied for your job uh, on this website. You know, here's my resume. Really looking forward to hearing back from you. Let me know if you need anything else. Just a simple email or a LinkedIn post or something to like the hiring manager or to the manager or to the CEO of the startup, whatever, uh, right? That goes a long way. That shows that you care about something. You're actually like not just randomly applying. Uh, you're applying your mind. And it shows the job process, the resume process is a precursor of how you're going to behave at work. Right, at one up it for our community manager position, we had people right answer three or four questions. Now, based on the quality of your answers, I know how hard you are or are not going to work. If you're not going to answer those three or four questions that are very relevant to the job with some sort of like thought, if you're just going to write random stuff, you had people just fill in like a space and move on. Like, do you think you're only going to get a job if you don't answer the question that the company is asking you to answer? Right, we've had people who've written like 500 word essays and we're like, wow, okay. You know, that's a lot of thought put into it, but is it um, detail oriented to the point of efficiency or is it some, this person just rambling on because we've asked a question and they want to show how smart they are. So you're being judged at every point of the way, not to get this job, but how you're going to perform in that role. And that's what you guys have to understand. It, it, your, your job application process is the precursor of how you're going to behave as an employee. So think of it that way, right? If your boss, if you're at work, if your boss asks you to do a task, how would you do it? That's the same way you need to treat your resume building and your career building uh, strategies. Now, lastly, right, uh, to keep this short, I think just under uh, 25, 30 minutes, is that hard work clearly shows and sloppy work is totally ignored. It's so simple for people to say no to sloppy work. But when we see hard work, when we see somebody with a portfolio that's been designed or a website or like a LinkedIn page has a little bit of panache, a little bit of style to it. You know, somebody who cares about what, what they're doing. You don't have to be a Picasso, right? Uh, you don't have to like have a beautiful work of art. If you're a designer, I would argue you do have to have a very beautiful portfolio. But even as a developer uh, or even as somebody in finance, like you got to have a little bit of style. What is your personality? Like, what are you all about? Like you don't want to be just one more in, you know, like a series of um, candidates and uh, people who are out there. People hire people who they think are going to make good co-workers, going to make good mentors, going to make good mentees. Um, whenever, you know, we've hired either in my corporate job, I had to go to college campus and do good people, or when I had to hire uh, for my own company or for other consulting gigs that we have, we're always looking for people who have some personality, right? We want to work with people who are more than just a face of cardboard. Everybody has a personality. Everybody has hobbies and passions and, you know, what they like, what they don't like. Bring that to the surface. Don't just become a number in our resume file. Um, and we've done, you know, resume files where we'll go to a college and we'll collect 50 resumes. Um, this was a lot at my corporate job. We just go get 100 resumes. And now we're just, we're just blasting through resumes, you know, trying to find, like, personality. We're trying to find people who have some style. Like, most people can be taught a job, right? But you can't teach ethics. You can't teach motivation. You can't teach style. You can't teach personality, like you can't uh, do these things. You can teach people how to code, how to write, how to read, but you can't teach a person how to be themselves. So that's what you're bringing to the table. 
So your resume, your online portfolio, your uh, LinkedIn, everything has to have that commonality of this is you, this is what you're all about. And there has to be a culture fit from you plus the company. Uh, now, I understand that in India, sometimes it's very different where, you know, you want to just work at like an Accenture or like a mass recruitment company that will come in, recruit 100 people, then then train you and then drop you off whether you pass or not. But even in that case, like even if you're going to work at an EY that will hire 50 people from your company, there's only 50 out of the, you know, X thousand people at your uh, college that they're going to hire from. So that's really where you need to like outshine your fellow classmates. And trust me, everybody is trying to get forward. So if you can spend some time, spend some effort, be yourself, and then take a few of these pointers that we've discussed, it could really, really boost your uh, career, you know, your chances of getting a job that you actually like, rather than a job that you just got pushed into. So please email us at hello at one uh, for the skills program. If you have any doubts about this, as an ambassador, we'd be happy to review your resume, do a small career building workshop with you. If you'd like, you're welcome to always come into our office as an ambassador and talk to us, give us a call message Sandeep for me. And uh, yeah, hopefully this really helps you out. If you need any additional resources, do let us know. And uh, yeah, we'd love to see what uh, resumes you guys come up with. And very quickly, I'm just gonna display on the screen the resume words that I said, and I'm gonna be emailing this out to you guys as well um, when we upload this video to YouTube. So here we go, just here's a quick, I'm gonna leave this on screen for some time. So those of you who don't get the download can just get these words off the video. Let's start with this. All right, come on, Expo. So feel free to pause the video and use these words as and when you'd like in your resumes. All right, guys. Cheers. Take care. All right, done.